Hi everyone, this is Mr. Varos and Miss Kirstens talking you through Living Space today by Intiaz Darka. So we thought we'd just start with a bit of context because you do get marks for AO3 in the poetry section, in the anthology section, not in Unseen. Um, so it's important for you to know that Darka was born in Pakistan, but then grew up in Scotland. So she's had quite a multicultural um, lifestyle and she also continues to visit India and Pakistan to this day. So she has first-hand experience of what it is like to live in Asia and also um, how the people in the Mumbai slums actually live. So she draws on that experience in her writing. This particular poem is all about the slums. So the slums is like um, kind of a shanty town that is directly outside of the main city of Mumbai. And it's a place where lots of people move from the rural areas in order to try and find themselves a better life closer to the city. So whilst we might look on it as a place of unpleasantness and somewhere that you wouldn't really want to live, for these people, it's a symbol of hope. And that does come across in the poem. So themes, we have a few themes on the board, on the presentation. I'm going to start with fragility. Uh, we can see this theme in, first of all, the structure itself. I'm not calling it a home. I'll come to that later. But the structure itself where these individuals live, um, it is fragile. It's, you know, clutch, you know, it says um, nails clutch at open seams. It talks about it being crooked. It talks about it leaning dangerously. It could break any minute. It almost implies it's on the verge of collapse. There's a sense that it's not quite stable. Uh, so that's how we can see fragility. We can also see fragility in the people themselves, that their life is quite fragile living in this sort of environment. Faith and hope, this message comes through particularly towards the end of the poem where we see that there are, you know, the thin walls of faith. We see that these individuals, as uh, Miss Kirsten said, have come to this very sort of dangerous, run down shantytown, so to speak, slum, for, um, you know, in the search of a better life, in the hope that they will ultimately have a better quality of life in the long run. Um, so it's faith, they're almost putting all their faith in living in this sort of area. Boldness, that links the idea of bravery. They're quite brave to be living in this very, um, you know, in unstable sort of area. And quite frankly, in such a unstable structure itself. Um, and living in these conditions can be quite perilous. So again, there's a sense of bravery and courage for it. Chaos and danger is just the environment generally. It's quite, it's quite a loud environment. It's quite, it's, it's got a lot of hustle. It's got a lot of bustle. Again, the idea that at any point the building could collapse, it is a dangerous place to live. It's not the safest place to live. And finally, place, which is quite obvious, it is about a city, okay? It is about a city. It is about a place of living. Lovely. So we're just gonna read through the poem and then we'll go through some key quotations, so. There are just not enough straight lines. That is the problem. Nothing is flat or parallel. Beams balance crookedly on supports thrust off the vertical. Nails clutch at open seams. The whole structure leans dangerously towards the miraculous. Into this rough frame, someone has squeezed a living space. And even dared to place these eggs in a wire basket, fragile curves of white hung out over the dark edge of a slanted universe, gathering the light into themselves as if they were the bright, thin walls of faith. So the overall message here is that Darker is celebrating the bravery of these people living in the slum. She's celebrating the fact that human beings can survive, can adjust and adapt to the to different conditions of living, to different environments. Yes, the slum is not the most favorable place to live. It is not very pleasant. It is not meant to be a pleasant place, but the poem itself is not meant to be overall negative. It's not meant to be just looking at, oh God, as Miss her person said, you know, this slum's disgusting. The people who live there are disgusting. It's meant to be positive, oddly enough. It's meant to show that we can always have hope. We can hope for better things. Even in the darkest situations, even in the most unpleasant places, we can, um, we can try and search for a better outcome. Having said that though, she is raising awareness of issues, um, of the issues in the country, issues regarding poverty, issues regarding inequality and issues regarding class because ultimately these people are crowded together in this very, very unpleasant environment due to these factors. Okay, so our first key quotation then is the opening line, there are just not enough straight lines. 
So you will notice that already there's a very strange structure to this poem and, and that kind of runs the whole way through. There's enjambment throughout. One line runs into another and that kind of reflects the actual shape of the slums themselves. They are misshapen, they are uneven, they are asymmetric and that is because they are not fulfilling our Western expectations, all straight lines and brickwork and um, perfectly matching windows and doors. It's a sort of alternative way of living. So this statement at the beginning, there are just not enough straight lines, is kind of mimicking what a Western person might say when looking at the slums from afar. In our opinion, from what we're conditioned to believe, this kind of lifestyle is, is strange. It's unusual to not have straight lines. Surely that makes it dangerous. Surely that makes it precarious. And so here, Dark is kind of mimicking and kind of mocking the Western dismissal of slum lifestyle and any lifestyle that doesn't reflect our own and that use of the phrase not enough implies that there's a level of deprivation that these people don't have access to the basic necessities of life and so we're almost made to pity them in these lines we're almost made to feel sorry that they're that they're trapped in this kind of really unstable environment our second quotation nails clutch at open seams it's interesting that she uses the word nails because you know Perhaps initially we think of it as nails that we use when building, metal nails, but then we can also think of it as personification, you know, human nails, almost clutching at something. The first interpretation lends itself to the idea that the building itself is trying to hold itself together, you know, it is falling apart, it's clutching, there's a sense of desperation, They're des the building's desperately trying to, you know, not collapse. However, if we're looking at it um, from the perspective of the people living there, it's almost as though they are clutching. They're clutching at something. They're trying to hold on to something. They're trying to hold their lives together, make a life. They're desperate to keep their lives going in this very sort of dangerous environment. And Miss Kirsten, you said an interesting thing earlier about the open scene. Yeah, the open scene suggesting they're kind of exposed to all of the elements, to all of the people. They don't have any protection or privacy in this area that they live in. Lovely. Which again links the idea of not having any luxuries or basic necessities. This is a really interestingly structured line. Again, the whole structure leans dangerously towards the miraculous. You'll notice once more we've got um, enjambment here between dangerously and towards. That is again deliberate. The things are uh, feeding into each other. Each line is just running into the next. There is no clear structure using say zero or full stops. Um, it's kind of out of control. And you'll also notice that dangerously, if you look at the poem, um, if you look at it on the page, the word dangerously overhangs the line below. So it's literally mimicking the sort of unstable structure of the slums. What's amazing, though, and what Darker is referring to when she says miraculous, is that despite the fact that it's so uneven, despite the fact that it's so misshapen and it's overhanging each other everywhere, it still stays standing. And so with that final word at the end, miraculous, she's kind of shifting her tone from one of criticism and negativity and pessimism to one of awe and um, appreciation and respect for the people who somehow managed to survive in these seemingly difficult circumstances. So you've got that juxtaposition of dangerous versus miraculous. So whilst it is hard to live there, they're still making it possible. It's amazing. And from then on, she is expressing her um, admiration for these people and their lifestyle. Someone has squeezed a living space. The quote, this quotation is interesting because the word someone immediately kind of anonymizes them. It doesn't give them necessarily a fixed identity. It almost implies anybody, anybody could be trying to live here. Anybody could be desperate enough to come to live in this slum. Uh, so that's very interesting. And it talks about them trying to squeeze in a living space, which implies, number one, there's not much space to live there anyway. They're really trying to find a small spot to sort of, um, you know, uh, seek shelter. But additionally, it can imply that they are not welcome. Perhaps the you know, people in the city do not want these people. They're squeezing in, which again echoes that sense of desperation. And as Miss Kirsten said earlier, linking to AO3, a lot of people coming to Mumbai in hope of a new life, a better life. They're squeezing themselves in, they're desperate for that. Interestingly, they refer to 
their respective homes as living spaces. You know, when Darker writes about it, she doesn't say it's their home, she's a living space, which is quite a cold description. It's quite cold. It almost implies this is just a place to survive. It's just a place to rest your head. It perhaps is not permanent. It might even be temporary. It's very transient. And if you look at where this line is placed in the poem, it's actually sandwiched between the two larger stanzas, which again implies it's almost like a physical representation, a physical um, source that we can see it physically on the page through the structure that people are squeezing their way in. In the same way, this line is squeezed into that stanza between the two people are squeezing themselves into these uh, slums in the hope of a better life. And it's also the idea that they kind of have to force their way in because society doesn't make space for them. It's kind of a, a moral comment or criticism of society because we don't allow space for these types of people. We almost deliberately shut them out and so they have to force their way in. And actually there's a comment on, on that message as well later. So here, dared to place these eggs in a wire basket, um, Darker is sort of, again, expressing her admiration for these people who um, have risked everything to move here. They use, she uses the word dared, the verb dared, to imply that they're willing to take lots of risks, that they are brave, that they are courageous, that they are taking a chance. Um, and she thinks that's impressive. You know, she's not saying it's disgusting. She thinks it's amazing that they are willing to take that risk with their lives because not many people would. Um, and then she's also kind of referring to their unbelievable optimism, their way of keeping faith in this circumstance, despite all of the um, inequality, despite all of the misshapenness, despite not having basic necessities. She uses the word eggs, which implies hope for the future, something that could grow into new life, something that could bring about a whole new lifestyle for them to represent what they're looking forward to, this kind of hope they have for their future. And the idea that it's a wire basket, it's not like a solid basket, it's a wire basket with holes in, again, adds to this idea that those eggs could easily fall, but there's always the chance of them breaking, and yet somehow they survive. So here, Darker is commenting on how it's amazing, how it's admirable that they're able to keep faith, they're able to believe in this new life for themselves, despite the precariousness of their situation. Dark edge of a slanted universe. So it's interesting that it uses the word the dark edge. This creates quite an ominous, uneasy feel. It almost implies that, you know, this place, this slum is already not very, you know, it's not a very pleasant place. It's not the safest. It's not the most welcoming. But there's a there's an even more dangerous and even more um, relentless side to it. There's even, an even more ruthless side to this place um, that they are living in. So dark edge, that word dark, it's quite... It, creates quite a heavy feel, it creates this sort of almost worrying um, feeling amongst the reader. What is this dark edge? Um, additionally, they refer to the idea of a slanted universe. And this is quite interesting because, again, physically, you think of it as, oh, you know, it's referring to the building. Well, the structure, it's slanted, it's uneven, it's crooked. But it could also be um, sort of a metaphor for wide, for wider commentary on class, on poverty, on the unequal wealth distribution distribution in the country. It's almost referring, referring to the fact that some people do live at, you know, we, we are living in a slanted universe. Some people have more advantage. They're at the top of that slant. Some people are at the bottom. Some people are much more disadvantaged. So it's implying the people here are, as it says, at the dark edge of a slanted universe. They are in the worst possible position in what is already an unslanted, sorry, a slanted, unjust, um, unfair, society and that's quite interesting because in you know at, there's never a point in the poem where it in you know before that where it really uh, you know implies that anything's ever going to necessarily be straightened out it keeps referring to this uh crookedness and imbalance only at the end there's a sense of hope but it doesn't necessarily mean the actual corruption itself is going to change yeah and that kind of dark edge as if they're being pushed to the margins of society and they're having to force their way in like mm. that stanza earlier on so the final line is a really interesting one. She deliberately ends on a positive image. They were the bright, thin walls of faith. Here you've got brightness directly contrasting the darkness in the, the line we just looked at. So you've got their brightness, their positivity, their optimism um, up against the sort of marginalization and discrimination and darkness that they face from society. So in spite of all that, they remain bright. 
and they remain faithful. And you end up on that word faith. That is the lasting message of the whole poem without a full stop as well kind of means it's lasting. It goes on. They're, they're maintaining that faith despite their circumstances. And despite the fact that it's clearly quite fragile, the use of the word thin implying that it could be broken at any point, and yet they don't give up. They're holding on to that faith. So at the end, despite all of this discrimination, mm -hmm. despite all of the um, inequality between rich and poor, these people have managed to carve themselves a life and still have hope for the future. And I think that's kind of her overall message about the slums. And it's interesting when she says the word walls of faith, because it almost implies what the image that comes to my mind is literally someone sitting in a room and it sounds weird mm. and there's just they've built these walls they've built this barrier around them and it is their it is almost like a it's it's them blocking mm. everything out and that is their safe space and a bit of a long-winded way to get to what I'm going but it, it makes me think that this structure although we look at it as something that might be dangerous and worrying it's actually a representation of their faith, it, they are living so dangerously. They are living in such um, such an unstable structure. As as we said, their lives, everything, their world could collapse any minute. But they are the walls of their faith. It's almost them living in such a dangerous place as a representation of how much faith they have that things will get better, um, that they will have greater mm. opportunities. They are willing to suffer this environment for faith, for the in the in the hope that something will improve, mm. which is quite admirable. Okay, so comparison. Um, we have chosen uh, London by William Blake as a potential poem you could compare living space to. Two reasons for this that we've put on our, pres our presentation is that both poems explore what life is like in the city. So both poems look at what is city life like? How do these people live? What are the impacts of living in a particular way on the individuals? Uh, additionally, we've also said they both look at inequality, a sense of danger. You know, in London, um, there seems to be an inequality between the classes. You have the institutions at the top, the church, the government, the monarchy, and then you have everybody else mm. at the bottom. Um, the danger, we talk, it talks about things like harlots. It refers to blood on the palace walls. The idea that um, it doesn't paint the image that this is necessarily the safest place. It's a lot, it, it presents London as quite a violent place, as quite a, you know, a depressing place to live in, really, just a very, un, again, unpleasant place to live in. And actually, it's interesting cause, because when we read uh, William Blake's London, I think it contrasts with a, with a lot of people's image of London around mm. the world as this glistening, gleaming city of opportunity. And to some extent, that's sort of what Dark is doing. Yeah. You know, Mumbai, you think city, life, culture, colour, but she represents a darker part of that city, as does William Blake. He represents the darker side of his city. Um, so they're quite similar in that sense. However, um, yes, they're, whilst obviously they have a lot of similarities, you can also look at a contrast. And I think one of the key contrasts here is that in London, there's very much a sense of there being no hope that everything is negative, that even their minds have been infected by the negativity of London. They've got the mind forged manacles. Um, and at the end of the poem, you've got the marriage hearse, as if even a joyful event like marriage can be tainted and ruined by death. Whereas in living space, despite the difficult circumstances, there is that sense of hope. There's the bright thin walls of faith. There are the eggs in the wire basket. There is potential for a better future, for a better life, as represented by the yolk of those eggs. So I think Darker's is a much more optimistic poem overall. The message is far more optimistic, whereas in London, it, it's very negative and he almost offers no solace, does he? Offers no, no positivity at all. Absolutely not. So, yeah, that's the way you could compare. Is that our last slide? I think that's it. I think that's it. OK, well, I hope it's been helpful, Year 11. If you have any questions for us at all, do feel free to come ask us. I'm in E13 and Mrs. I am in E3. E3. Um, and good luck with your revision. Mm.